Welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate the opportunity to be here today. And I appreciate the decorum of this committee. It is uh, public debate is a wonderful thing, isn't it? And uh, you're engaged in a good work, and, and I, do, uh, I do appreciate that. My name is Mark Browning. I'm here representing the students, the faculty, the staff, the administration, the president, and the trustees who are locally elected of North Idaho College in Coeur d'Alene. And I appreciate the consideration for those of us who have come from some uh, distances to be here today. I want to echo the sentiments of uh, a number of folks that you've heard here today, primarily those from some of our fellow institutions and, and some of the students. We, we share those similar concerns. I won't uh, belabor those points as we've gone through them. Some of the points that I would just like you to be aware of, the community colleges are a unique creation in this state. Uh, we believe we serve a very uh, crucial and vital role in our communities. The people who lead those community colleges are five citizens just like yourselves, elected just like yourselves by friends and neighbors. This bill, Senate 1254, would significantly erode their ability to effectively govern and manage those campuses. You know, we often talk in the arena of public policy that local governance is best. It is the, the most connected form of government is the most local government, whether it's your local school board, your weed board. I don't want to say homeowners association because that might be a road we don't want to go down. Yeah, be but careful. <laughs> be very careful. <laughs> the point that we're making is, is our friends and neighbors who we elect to help lead us on the most local level are most responsive and most accountable to us. When we as parents send our children and to these institutions to find opportunities to help make their lives better and to enhance our state, we have friends and neighbors that we've elected to put the best policies and procedures in place. 1254 would, would put a serious hindrance upon those folks to be able to, to govern this campus. There's been some uh, talk today about the fiscal impact. Uh, we pride ourselves at North Idaho College as, as uh, being a small college, we have about 6,000 students. Uh, the effect on the very minimum from what we can see to implement this would be at, at the very minimum around $221,000. It could run closer to $300,000. Now that may not seem like a large figure in this body. Some of the, the figures that you deal with are in the millions and billions. But $300,000 for a small college on a campus like us will be a significant uh, fiscal impact, especially with declining enrollment we're down 10%, which means we have more people going back to work in the five northern counties, and we're happy for that. But we are in, in a time of, of great cutback. There's been talk about uh, the safe learning environment. I, I would like to just echo those sentiments. One other point that I'd like to, to bring to you folks before the committee today is that our campus, like many across the state, are very integrated. We have students from, from uh, a few months toddlers all the way through to folks that uh, have uh, a little gray hair on top like myself. The average age of our student is 27 years old. Uh, I believe the good sponsor said something about that there would be just a very few that would be eligible uh, for this permit because of, of the age 21. Our average age of our student is 27 and getting older. The majority of our students would be eligible and under these parameters. The, the point about a, a the, the young children is we have a teaching center uh, daycare on campus where our students uh, learn uh, elementary and, and uh, childhood education and development. Young toddlers, babies up to the age of five are on our campus. We have school children on our campus every day for field trips. We welcome them in. We truly have an integrated environment with our, with our campus. We uh, grade school, high school students who come and take dual credit. The debate has never been about whether or not we should be looking at this type of a provision for our elementary schools or our high schools, but yet we have those students on our campus. That gives us a lot of concern about how we would appropriately uh, oversee what happens when those students are on campus. Are we in effect a K-12 campus at that point? How does that work? Uh, President Burnett from the University of Idaho talked about the, the, the making of good public policy and the mashing of ideas. I think you've seen that there are enough concerns with some of the language of the bill and the way it's written that, and not to discount the essence of the debate, but that when you have concerns, bring it back, keep working on it, and, uh, and keep after it until we get it right. The inconsistencies in, in some of the language that uh, Attorney Nelson pointed out I think are very valid. I, I'd like to leave those with you and just say that we appreciate the work that you're doing. I know you have a difficult position. But keep in mind that local control and local authority is at stake here. Mr. Chairman, thank you for the opportunity to be here today, and I'd, I'd be happy to take an attempt at any questions you might have. Representative Batten. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Browning. You had made a reference to a fiscal impact of $300,000. Can you point me to the legislation where it talks about the fiscal impact? Uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, Representative Bat, at the end of the bill, I believe the fiscal impact says it's de minimis, stating that uh, there would be a cost for signage, uh, but that that would be the only fiscal impact according to the sponsor. As you've seen with the implementation, our estimates certainly don't range as high as some of the universities. We're not as large operation, but that's in training of uh, our security force, who is currently not armed, uh, training equipment, ongoing training, and, and potentially the addition of uh, security just for our main campus. Uh, and Mr. Chairman, just quickly for the record, we have campuses throughout the five northern counties. Uh, we offer classes in Post Falls, in Sandpoint, in Bonners Ferry, in Kellogg, in Plummer. Uh, will have expenses that are associated with all of those campuses as well. Mr. Chairman. Representative Batten. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Browning, I'm not seeing that. Can you point me to the point in the bill, please? I'm not seeing where you were mentioning that in the legislation. Can you direct me to the de minimis part? Uh, Mr. Chairman and Representative Batten, I believe it's at the end of, of the legislation where the fiscal impact is always listed uh, in the final page. I don't have the legislation in front of me. I have it electronically, but... Uh, uh, fiscal impact is always listed at the end of the bill. I believe I believe it's on the statement of purpose. Thank you. Representative Sims. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, being from North Idaho, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Browning, for coming down here to testify. Uh, I'm aware of your campus, and I and I know that it sits right uh, adjacent to uh, the, all the recreation areas that are uh, within our city, and uh, so I'm asking. Are your boundaries ever marked? Does anyone know uh, you can step across the road, you can step across uh, a sidewalk, and you are or you aren't on the campus? It would be an incredibly difficult thing to, to be marked. And with the law as it currently is, uh, they can carry. So uh, what are plans to, to mark boundaries if, if you find this to be uh, something necessary by this legislation. Mr. Browning. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Representative Sims, yes, as you know, uh, we like to say without uh, a doubt we have the most beautiful campus on uh, throughout the state, uh, being on the banks of the Spokane River and Lake Coeur d'Alene. It is difficult. And our campus is You're split. smiles behind you. <laughs> <laughs> they know it's true. Um, we're the only campus that has its own beach. Uh, you know, we have a beach oh, on Lake Coeur d'Alene that is technically Sorry part I of the campus. But then the city of Coeur d'Alene has Rosenberry Drive referred to as the dike road that goes in between. Uh, policing this and regulating this is very difficult. Uh, signage alone. Uh, it, now, there are currently a number of signs throughout uh, the campus that say, welcome to North Idaho College, a tobacco-free campus, a safe learning environment, that notify you that you're on campus. But uh, those, I would imagine, my estimation, will be part of the expense that will we'll then have to increase that, uh, not only on the main Coeur d'Alene campus, but also uh, with the other campuses that we have throughout the region. Representative Monks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just was um, following up, I guess, on, on um, Representative Sims here. So I'm trying to understand, currently the practice is that, or, or the policy is that guns are not allowed there on campus, and yet we don't have a signage issue and very ill-defined boundaries. And so I'm trying to understand why there is now going to be an issue if they are allowed in a concealed fashion for signage on ill-defined boundaries. I, I'm, I'm not seeing why that's becoming an issue now. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Representative Monks, that question might be better d directed at the sponsor as in his statement of purpose, and thank you, Representative Batt, you're correct, that's in the statement of purpose there, that they, the sponsor says that there would be de minimis cost for signage. Uh, that would uh, would be necessary to further explain that. I wouldn't want to speak for the sponsor on that. Further questions? Thank you, Mr. Browning. Thank you. 